Hi everyone, it's Professor Permanton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on solving rational equations. So if you remember from the previous video, we talked about solving linear equations with fractions and without fractions. In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve rational equations where you have variables in the denominator, how to recognize whether an equation is what's called an identity, a conditional equation, or an inconsistent equation, and then we're going to solve equations that are coming from applied problems. So let's start by talking about what rational equations are. A rational equation is an equation that contains one or more rational expressions. Now you might be wondering what is a rational expression? A rational expression is where you have a fraction with the numerator or denominator with polynomials. Here's a couple examples of what a rational expression might look like. x divided by x plus 3 that's called a rational expression because you have variables in the numerator and or denominator. Subtract 2 equals 2x minus 1 divided by x minus 4. Well, this third term is also a rational expression because you have variables in the numerator and or denominator. And so if this is an equation, this becomes a rational equation. Or you can also have this example, 5 divided by x minus 2 plus 2 divided by x plus 2, and this is equal to negative 1 divided by x squared subtract 4. Each of these three terms has an x in the denominator, so each of the three terms are rational expressions, and so you have a rational equation. It doesn't matter if this third term has an x squared in the denominator, it's still called a rational expression. There are variable expressions. in the denominators. And so that's what makes them rational equations. So let's talk about how do you solve rational equations. To be able to solve a rational equation, we're going to use the trick that we used in the previous video by eliminating the denominators, by finding the least common denominator, or LCD, which can be used to clear all the fractions in your equation. One thing that we need to be very careful about when we solve rational equations is that rational expressions, the domain is not all real numbers. So we have to be very careful about what values of x that we get for a solution and whether it actually checks with the original equation. So we need to avoid any values of the variable that will make the denominator zero. In other words, this will be our very first step when we solve equations. Notice that this first fraction, 1 divided by x, you cannot plug in x equals 0 because that makes the first fraction undefined. And so this third fraction, the same thing, 3 divided by 2x. Again, if you plug in x equals 0, you're going to have an undefined expression. So in other words, if x equals 0 is a solution when you solve the equation, it's not really the solution because it can't check. It gives you something that's undefined on either side of the equation. So keep that in mind as we work through example 3. Example 3 is solve the rational equation. So we're going to do a couple of these. Number one, the rational equation is 5 divided by 2x equals 17 divided by 18, and it subtracts 1 divided by 3x. So this is a rational equation because there are x's in the denominator. And let's figure out what values of x can we not have as a solution. Well, notice that the domain of the first rational expression your denominator is 2x, it cannot be 0, and so that means x cannot be 0. The second fraction is okay. You divide by 18, it's all right. The third fraction has a 3x in the, in the denominator. It cannot be 0, so x cannot be 0 again. So the domain is the set of all real numbers are possible as solutions except for 0. 0 is not possible for the solution. Okay, so to be able to solve the equation, we're going to find the least common denominator. Or LCD of all three fractions. And multiply all terms by the LCD. To clear fractions. Okay, so the same thing will work as we did in the previous example. 
We need to find out what is the LCD when there's numbers in the denominator and also variables. So let's look at the numbers first. 2, 18, and 3. The LCD between 2, 18, and 3 is 18. So that means we need to multiply by 18 to make sure that all the numbers will cancel out and clear out the fractions. Now let's look at the variables. There's an x to the first power in the denominator, and there's also an x to the first power in the denominator in the third fraction. So x multiplied by x in each of the three fractions will cancel out the x in the denominator. So the LCD in this case is 18 times x. So multiply each of the three terms by 18x. So 18x times 5 divided by 2x equals 18x times 17 divided by 18 minus 18x times the third fraction, 1 divided by 3x. And so now notice that each of the denominators should cancel out and gives you 1. So 2x goes into 18x 9 times. So you have 9 times 5 equals 18 cancels out with 18 one time, and you have a 17 times x, so 17x. And then notice the third fraction, 3x goes into 18x six times. So my 6 times 1, or 6. So it worked. By multiplying by the LCD, you cleared out all the denominators, and so now we have a linear equation. You have 9 times 5 is 45, equals 17x, subtract 6, and so now we need to isolate the x by adding 6 to the left side of the equation. So 45 plus 6 is 51, equals 17x. And now to isolate the x, divide both sides by 17. And so x is equal to 51 divided by 17, or 3. So x equals 3 is the one solution. So now let's check. The only value that we cannot have as a value for the solution is x equals 0. So x equals 3 does work for the original equation. It will check. So it's the solution. All right, let's try another problem now. Number 2, we're going to solve this rational equation. x divided by x subtract 2 equals 2 divided by x subtract 2 subtract 2 divided by 5. So again, notice that it's a rational equation because you have variables in the denominator. And so they are rational expressions. So let's find out what the domain is for each of the rational expressions. So x attract 2 is the denominator of the first term. It cannot be 0. So x cannot be 2 when you solve for x. Same thing for the second fraction. You get x attract 2 cannot be 0. And so x cannot be 2 again. Notice that the third fraction just has 5 in the denominator, so you're never divided by 0. So the only value you have to exclude is x equals 2 from the domain. So negative infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity. Okay, so let's solve the equation now. First step, find the least common denominator. Or LCD and multiply all the terms. By the LCD to clear the fractions. Okay, so let's find out what the LCD will be in this case. So just like we were doing in the previous video, since there are more than one term in the denominator, make sure they go in parentheses. So that means x minus 2 goes in parentheses for each of the first two terms. So we need to figure out what do we need to multiply each term by so it clears out the fractions. So I need to multiply by x minus 2 to be able to clear out x minus 2. So x minus 2 in parentheses. That will make sure that the first fraction is cleared from the denominator. x minus 2 will be cleared out from the second fraction for the same reason, so x minus 2. But notice that I need a 5 to be able to multiply the third fraction to clear out its fraction. I need a 5 times x minus 2 is the LCD. So now multiply each of the three terms by the LCD. 5 times x minus 2 times the first fraction. Then the second fraction by the LCD again. 2 times x minus 2. And then the third fraction minus 5 times the LCD times the third fraction. 5, 2 divided by 5. So now x minus 2 is go into each other one time each, and so you have 5 times x remaining. 
and then you have an equals. The second fraction, hex minus 2, is going to each other one time each, so you have a 5 times 2 remaining. And then the third fraction, notice that the only thing that go into each other is the 5's, one time each, so you have a 2 times x minus 2 in parentheses. So that's why it's very important to enclose more than one term in parentheses. That way you can see the 2 times x and the 2 times negative 2 when you distribute. So now we have a linear equation. Go ahead and distribute the 2 through the parentheses to remove any grouping symbols. So you have 5x equals 5 times 2 is 10. Subtract 2 times x. And then negative 2 times negative 2 becomes positive 4. Combine any like terms on the same side of the equation. So you have 5x equals 10 plus 4 is 14, and then negative 2x. So now move the variable terms to the same side of the equation. So add 2x to the left side of the equation makes it 7x equals 14. And now isolate the x by dividing both sides by 7, and so we get x equals 2. So x equals 2 is the one solution that we came up with. But if you remember earlier that we checked for the domain, the domain of this rational equation or rational expressions did not contain x equals 2. So even though x equals 2 was the answer that we came up with, it's not the solution because it's not part of the domain. If I plugged in x equals 2 into this equation, I'm going to get 2 divided by 2 minus 2. That's 2 divided by 0. That left side of the equation doesn't even exist. It's undefined. So x equals 2 is not in the domain. The only value that could have made the equation true is x equals 2, but it's not actually part of the domain. So that means the equation has no solution. In other words, there are no values of x that will ever make this equation true. It is always false. So now we're going to talk about how do you classify equations based on what types of solutions they have. Well, there are three different cases for what an equation can be classified as. So an identity. An equation that is true for all real numbers on both sides of the equation is called an identity. So what does that mean? Well, here's an example. You have the equation 2 times x subtract 2, and then plus 6 outside the parentheses is equal to 2x plus 2. Well, this is a linear equation because you have x's raised to the first power, and there are no denominators with, with variables. So let's solve this like normal. So distribute to remove any grouping symbols. 2x subtract 4 plus 6 equals 2x plus 2. Combine any like terms on the same side of the equation. So that means 2x, negative 4 plus 6 is 2, positive 2, and the right side of the equation is 2x plus 2. So notice that the left side of the equation is identical to the right side of the equation. Even if you, if you try to get x's on the same side of the equation, notice you're going to subtract 2x on either the left side or the right side, and the x's will cancel out and you'll get 0. And then the 2 can be combined with the other 2, so subtract 2 on both sides, and you get 0 again. So 0 equals 0. This is a true statement for all real numbers. So in other words, this equation is true no matter what the value of x is. x can be 7, x could be 17, x could be negative 2. It's going to be true every single value for x. So this is called an identity. It's true for all real numbers. On the other hand, a second case would be a conditional equation. A conditional equation is an equation that is not an identity, but it is true for at least one real number. And if it is, it's called conditional. In other words, the condition for the equation to be true is the one or more x values. That makes it true. So here's an example of a conditional equation. 4x plus 5 is equal to 2 times the parentheses, x subtract 6, and then outside the parentheses plus 5. So to solve this like normal, distribute to remove any grouping symbols. 4x plus 5 equals 2 times x, 2x, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, then plus 5. Combine any like terms, so 4x plus 5 is equal to 2x, 
subtract 7, so negative 12 plus 5. Now move the variable terms to the same side. So let's move the variable terms to the left. So subtract 2x makes it 2x. Subtract 5 to move the constant term to the other side of the equation gives you negative 12. So now divide both sides of the equation by positive 2, and you get x is equal to negative 12 divided by 2, or negative 6. And so notice that you have one solution. And the solution will check because there are no values of x that we had to exclude where we would be dividing by 0. So since the equation is true only for one value, it's what's called a conditional equation. All right, and then the third case is what's called an inconsistent equation. An inconsistent equation is where you have an equation that is false or not true, not even for one value of x. So, for example, 2 times the parentheses x subtract 2 plus 7 outside the parentheses is equal to 2x subtract 8. Again, you don't know that it's a special case until you start solving the equation. So distribute to remove any grouping symbols. 2x subtract 4 plus 7 is equal to 2x subtract 8. Combine like terms. So you have 2x. Negative 4 plus 7 is positive 3 equals 2x minus 8. And so now move the variable terms to the same side. And you should notice that there's something special that happens. Subtract 2x on both sides gives you 0. And then you get plus 3 equals negative 8. So in other words, 3 is equal to negative 8. That's false. So it's a false statement for all real numbers. In other words, it doesn't matter what the value of x is, x could be anything. It will always make the equation a false statement at the end. So if it's that case, then this is called an inconsistent equation. So the important difference between an identity and an inconsistent equation is that in both cases, your variables will cancel out. The difference is an identity will give you a true statement always for all real numbers, and an inconsistent equation will give you a false statement for all real numbers. So just because your variables cancel out does not mean no solution. Is the statement true or is the statement false? Because that's going to give you the difference between identity versus inconsistent equation. Okay, example four. We're going to solve and determine whether the following equation is an identity, a conditional equation, or an inconsistent equation. So number one. First equation is 4x subtract 7 equals 4 times the parentheses x subtract 1 plus 3. So this is a linear equation, and now we're going to solve using those four steps. Remove any grouping symbols first. So 4x subtract 7 equals 4 times x, and then 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Combine any like terms on the same side of the equation. So 4x minus 7 equals 4x subtract 1 after you combine negative 4 plus 3. So now let's try to get the variable terms to the same side. Subtract 4x on the right side. Subtract 4x on the left side, and that gives you 0x, or 0. Subtract 7 equals negative 1, or negative 7 equals negative 1. So because the variables cancel it out, and you come up with a false statement, this is called an inconsistent equation. And that means that there is no solution. So there are no values of x that will ever make the equation true, so there's no solution to the equation. Okay, number two. This time the equation is negative 3, parentheses, x plus 5, subtract 11 outside the parentheses, is equal to 4x plus 15. So again, this is a linear equation. x is a raised to the first power, and there are no variables in the denominator. So solve by removing grouping symbols. 
So negative 3x minus 15 minus 11 equals 4x plus 15. Combine any like terms on the same side. So you have negative 3x. Negative 15 subtract 11 is negative 26 equals 4x plus 15. Move all the variable terms to the same side. So let's subtract 4x to move the variable terms to the left side. So negative 3x minus 4x is negative 7x. And now move the constant term to the opposite side of the equal sign. So add 26 to both sides of the equation. So 15 plus 26 gives you 41. Now isolate the equation by dividing both sides by negative 7. So x is equal to 41 divided by negative 7, which is negative 41 sevenths. And so you have one solution. And the equation is only true for this one value of x. So this is a conditional equation. Okay, and then number three. This time the equation is 4x subtract parentheses 2x plus 5. And then it equals 2x subtract 5. So remove any grouping symbols. So if there's a minus sign in front of the parentheses, it's distributed to both terms. So you'll change the signs. So 4x subtract 2x subtract 5 is equal to 2x subtract 5. Combine like terms again. 4x subtract 2x is 2x. Subtract 5 is equal to 2x subtract 5. So notice that the left side and the right side of the equation are identical. That means if you try to get the variable terms to the same side, you'll have 0x, or 0, minus 5 equals negative 5. And if you add 5 to both sides of the equation, you'll get 0 equals 0, which is a true statement. For all real numbers. So this is what's called, is called an identity. So in other words, the set of all real numbers are the solutions because any x value will make that equation true. So that gives you an example of each of the three different cases for what a, an equation might be classified as. An identity is true for all real numbers. An inconsistent equation is not true for any real number. And a conditional equation is true for one or more values of, of the variable, but not infinitely many. All right, let's finish up this video by talking about where does an application come in when solving linear equations. So in this next example, we're going to look at the procedure for solving linear equations, but can be used for an application that involves a value of a variable. So example five is talking about percentage of adult smokers. In the years after warning labels were put on cigarette packs, the number of smokers dropped from approximately two in every five adults to one in every five. So in other words, that's about 40% of adults were smoking before warning labels, and now it's about 20%. The bar graph shows the percentage of American adults who smoke cigarettes between 1970 and 2010. So in 1970, you can see that the percentage of adult Americans who were smoking were about 37%, and after they put the warning labels on cigarettes, the percentage has been dropping gradually. And so in 2010, it was 19%. This bar graph can be modeled by an equation. So anytime an equation is modeling a real life situation, it's what's called a mathematical model. So this equation, p plus x divided by 2 equals 37, this gives us an equation that's modeling the bar graph, where p is the percentage of Americans who smoke cigarettes, and x is years after 1970. So p is a percent, and x is the years after 1970. We're going to use this model to solve the next couple equations. All right, part one. Does the mathematical model underestimate or overestimate the percentage of American adults who smoke cigarettes in 2010? Well, we need to figure out what value of X is 2010. So X was years after 1970. So 2010 is 40 years after 1970. So our equation, p plus x divided by 2 equals 37, we are going to replace the x with 40. So this gives us p plus 40 divided by 2 is equal to 37. And 40 divided by 2 reduces or simplifies to just 20, 
equals 37. And so now notice that this is a linear equation that you can solve for p. So subtract both sides of the equation by 20. So you get p is equal to 37 subtract 20 or 17. So according to the model, the percentage of American adults who smoke cigarettes in 2010 was 17 percent. This p is already a percent. The bar graph said the actual percentage was 19 percent. So p is equal to 19. So the model was an underestimate to the actual amount. Okay, part two. Use the mathematical model again to project the year when only 7% of American adults will smoke cigarettes. So let's go back to the equation. P plus X divided by 2 is equal to 37. This time they're telling us the percentage. So the P is 7. So go back to the equation or the model and replace the P with a 7. So you have 7 plus X divided by 2 equals 37. So now we need to isolate the x to be able to solve the equation. So subtract both sides by 7 first to combine like terms. So that gives you x divided by 2 is equal to 37 subtract 7 is 30. And now if you want to clear the fractions, the LCD would be 2. So multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and that gives you x is equal to 60. And so this is 60 years after 1970. or it would be the year 2030. So according to the model, in 2030 is when the model will predict that only 7% of American adults will smoke cigarettes. So this finishes up our discussion on solving rational equations and also classifying equations as conditional, identities, or inconsistent equations. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about models and applications.